Hello, 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 and welcome back to the SketchUp Style channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to use the Frito Scale extension. This extension is a set of mostly scale tools, as you would expect, but it's not only that. Watch the whole video to fully grasp the power of this iconic SketchUp extension. But before we jump into it, I'd just like to share with you guys that this video you're about to watch is my 100th video on this channel. 100? And I'm in full celebration mode, so everyone who is here and has not yet subscribed, this is the perfect opportunity for you to do so. But not before you click the like button, of course. Back to Frito Scale. This first tool is the box scaling tool. It's like a standard scale tool, but with a catch. So sometimes your geometry is not perfectly aligned with the SketchUp world axes, or your component axes are not parallel to components geometry. So this tool lets you choose the orientation of the scaling box simply by clicking on an edge. These black handles work in the same way as your standard scale tool. By pressing Ctrl you can set your object center as the base scale point and with the Shift key you can switch between non-uniform and uniform scaling. If you press Tab, a dialog box will appear that will let you type the exact measurements you want your object to be. Like the standard scale tool, you can scale 2D faces, but unlike the standard scale tool, you can also scale single edges. There is also the target scale mode. To get into it, you double click one of the handles, you'll notice the orientation box will change color to red, and then you need to select your origin point, and then the target point. The next one is the taper tool. Same as the scale tool, you can choose the orientation of the taper box by clicking on an edge. This gives you a box with 20 handles that will allow you to scale one face of the box at a time, creating this way a taper transformation. Notice that every edge handle has two sides for each face, and every vertex handle has three sides for each of the three faces connected. All options are the same as the scale tool. Control key says the scale about the center of geometry, Shift key switches between uniform and non-uniform scale, and Tab gets you to an input value dialog box. The next tool, Box Planner Shearing, allows you to shear your object along each of three axes. In layman's terms, it makes all your objects appear drunk. The principles are always the same, choosing your box orientation by selecting an edge, Control to switch the center transformation, and Tab to put an input value. The next tool is the same as shearing tool, but this time it lets you select the shearing angle. This next one is my personal favorite, box stretching. Have you ever had a window you wanted to stretch and got these humongous window frames? Well, not anymore. By default, the stretch reference plane is in the geometry center, but in a specific situation like this one here, for example, you can activate it by pressing F4 on the keyboard and move it where you need it to be to get the desired result, like this. And you can even add a second one by pressing Ctrl and moving the first one. Next, we have the twisting box tool. You select the twisting axes by clicking on one of these handles and twist your shape. You can pick the rotation angle by typing it in the measurement value box down here. Press tab to get to this dialog box, where you can set the number of slices and choose whether you want smooth, soften or hidden edges. The more slices you choose, the smoother the transformation will look. Next one is the box rotation tool. When activating this tool, you get these handles that allows you to select the axis of rotation based on the box orientation. Click once to set the origin point and then again to set the target point. We have another rotation tool here and this one works just like the standard SketchUp Rotate tool. Activate the tool, select the plane, hold shift to lock it if you need to, click on the base point, click again to set the reference axis and then once more to rotate the object. This last tool, the radial bending tool, allows you to bend an object by choosing the bend plane, setting the origin point of the bend, then the length of the bend line, and finally the bend angle. If you want, you can bend only part of your object, and you can choose the number of segments of the bend if you press, you've guessed it, tab on the keyboard. 
So that's it, tutorial done. Thanks for sticking with me till the very end. I believe this extension is very well worth it. Thank you for watching and feel free to check out my Patreon page, link in the description where, amongst other things, you can get access to a download section of all my models from all my old videos and all the videos to come. The lowest membership is just $1 per month and it will help me a lot to keep making these videos for you guys. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.